Great, so we have a seven minute presentation and three presenters. This should uh, <laughs> go very well. Okay, so we're doing the mobile services across Denver and we're not talking about T-Mobile, we're not talking about Sprint, we're talking about uh, bringing homeless services and services who are um, directed at engaging folks in poverty to the streets and away from the uh, brick and mortar setting where we typically deliver those. So here we have our Lego guy, and we're, what we're talking about now is what are the elements of a mobile service? It's easy to call anything a mobile service right now because of how accessible uh, things are, but for this demonstration, we're talking about these features. When the client engagement happens in the community, it's a mobile service. When there's low to no barrier in nature, it leverages existing services, and it can be made available anytime, any place. Why do we do this? It's a great action reflection cycle. We have to take, we have to respond to criticism and feedback immediately. It demands strong partnerships, no fakers, and there's low entry fee to engaging in mobile services. We can get the laundry truck on the streets for about $80,000. What are some of the challenges? It requires dynamic partnerships. It's a dynamic environment. It's way out of our core competencies. Bay Out Enterprises doesn't know how to maintain a generator, but we had to learn when we bought the laundry truck. Um, and of course, when working in the community, we, we just can't control everything. Here are some examples of mobile services. Of course, this is the first one that we probably know the best, the ice cream truck. But of course, we have Colorado Coalition for the Homeless. They have a mobile health clinic. It's an amazing service. We see mobile dentists out on the streets. Lava May in San Francisco has a mobile shower and um, washer. And of course, we, we are onboarding mobile showers soon. What, how did we get to the mobile service? In 2015, we started asking folks on the streets, what do we need? Uh, the answers were access to showers and access to laundry. So that's where we got this idea. It was really from the streets of Denver. What's our impact right now? Well, we were able to serve 30 people a day per truck. Um, it provides three individuals a work opportunity to build up their work skills and resiliency. And each truck can launder almost 3,000 pounds of laundry a month. We could not do this alone, though. Uh, where's Cole? Cole is one of our greatest partners with the Tiny Home Village. We get out to the Denver Public Schools uh, once a week. We're at the day shelters, and we're also at the Denver Public Library. If we offered um, a, a brick and mortar service, there's no way we could have those diversity of partners that we have now. What is next? We want to, what we want to do next is we want to leverage, uh, Erica right here too, we want to leverage PRIs so that we can identify and have a relationship with the PRI so that um, our partners, uh, say in Longmont, could get a loan from a, from a PRI to launch their own laundry truck. Hi, I'm Marcus Rotosa. I'm from the uh, uh, Denver Human Services. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about Denver Dayworks. This is our um, iconic bus um, that we actually ran for a little over a year. We, we, have, a, we have a new van. Um, we started really this journey in November of 2015. The city wanted to take a, a different approach to engaging those who are homeless unsheltered, not engaging in services. Um, we ended up launching about a year later, um, uh, Denver Dayworks in November of 2016. Um, we really wanted to do something that was low barriers and employment focused. Our model is around tradi transitional jobs. Um, here's three other examples across the country, in Albuquerque, San Jose, and in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. They all employ a, diff a slightly different model. Ours is definitely more city-centered, uh, but we couldn't do this without Bayout Enterprises and everyone else who's worked with us. Um, this is a, a picture of our crew um, up in Rhino on one day. I'm actually in that picture somewhere. Um, but, you know, what, what makes this a, a mobile service? So, yes, we have a bus. Um, yes, we're able to get people out there, but it's really what we deliver in the field. Um, and that's the work of an employment specialist, helping someone to get a job and assistance to navigate it, helping someone to navigate what are the other supportive services that are really going to help them. Um, what we offer is six hours of work, uh, $70 cash at the end of the day, breakfast and lunch, and an hour again with an employment specialist or an assistance navigator. Uh, transportation out there, and we actually have a, a non-wage option for uh, those who don't have documents on them. Um, we have a couple of special work sites um, in Ballpark, um, and then also uh, Parks and Recreation. Now, who do we meet? Um, people with primarily these four issues. So unreliable transportation, love that 52 bus. Um, literal homelessness, um, food insecurity, and lacking basic needs like clothing. Um, not just for the job, but just for, for daily life. Um, let's see. So uh, our, our success thus far um, has really been based on, I don't know, somewhere here. Um, 
so so um, who, who, who actually did we meet? Um, we, we haven't met all 3,000 homeless in, in Denver, um, but of those that we have met, um, about 20 percent, um, uh, we've engaged with about 99 percent of the total population. Um, about half of those get placed, and about 71 percent retain that employment for 90 days. Thanks, Marcus. I'm David Henninger um, with Fayette Enterprises. Been there a long time. Um, can we go back one slide? Uh, just Oh, it's impossible. Never mind. Well, you, you got a glimpse. Uh, <laughs> part of our outreach, we have, Bayot has 17 federal contracts through a federal set-aside program that was created primarily for the blind after World War II. And those, um, those contracts go from uh, uh, North Platte, Nebraska, to Cotta Springs, to Boulder, to Aurora, to Denver. And we do a lot of different things at federal wages and federal benefits. Our jobs, um, and when I say that, the average wage is about $17 an hour. It's full-time, 40 hours. Three-fourths of, uh, <laughs> three of our workforce has to be composed of individuals that have two or more disabilities that make it difficult for that person to work uh, otherwise. We have our own site supervisors who are trained both in rehabilitation and, and other support services. Uh, and our payroll is about $6 million for that program um, with our federal contracts. Um, I could give you examples, but we've run out of time for that. <laughs> you, you saw that same slide that we showed when Mr. Becker was up here with the destruction of a brick and mortar. And as Scott said, what mobile services do is they enable us to go where people are. And um, that's a big advantage and they don't cost as much to put on the road, um, and yet they meet basic human needs. And um, we serve over 2,000 people a year. Um, we're an employment program, and we also do uh, housing support for about 100 and some units. So that, that's it, guys, and I want a man bun just like Coles. <laughs> I've, uh, I am so damn envious of that. Uh, <laughs>